before the first game of the 2022 season, the Kolkata Knight Riders had played 11 times and had won just once at the 1K Day Stadium. Of course, most of them were against the local franchise. This time around, win number two for them. So those stats are history. It's a fresh start. It's a neutral venue in a sense. And Kolkata get over Chennai fairly convincingly. Here we are to look back at game number one. And of course, we will look ahead to what's coming up on uh, in the next uh, day or so. This is Craig Buzz Live. And uh, it's been a victory, as I said, for Kolkata. Not quite maybe in the fashion we thought it could have gone if they had an eye on the net run rate. But nonetheless, comfortable in the end. Here's a look at the numbers before we meet our guest once again on Crick Buzz Live. 131 is all that Chennai managed for five in their 20 overs. And that too, thanks to 47 in the last three overs. MS Dhoni leading the way, 50 of 38. Kolkata, Ajinkya Rahane, top scorer, 44 of 34. But neither Rahane, nor Billings, nor Nitish Rana, all of whom look good, ended up with an asterisk next to their name. That belonged to the captain and to Sheldon Jackson. Nine deliveries to spare. Maybe a little bit of dent on the net run rate, but not quite uh, overwhelming. I'm joined by Ajay Jadeja and uh, Joy Bharacharya. Ajay, I know we sort of speculated on what stage they could go for that, but you could see with a couple of wickets for DJ Bravo, early days, they didn't want to really take any chances. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, that's what it looked like and what we saw. And uh, su what surprises me is uh, that, you know, I'm one of those who started believing now, you know, this game is now being led by coaches and not captains. But uh, what you saw today was not Brendan McCullum style uh, in that chase. It was more uh, Shreya Shahir style, which was in chase. And uh, that is something that I'd look forward to because, you know, KKR actually had success playing in the other style that they generally uh, play. And with that total that they were chasing, the, the position that they were in, say, about seven, eight, nine overs into that game, I was expecting the Brendan McCullum style to see. But uh, I'm happy because I'm a person who believes it should remain a captain's game, not a coach's game. But Joy, you alluded to Brendan McCullum and his style. And I'm sure they would have had a chat about that. But uh, we saw Andre Russell upstairs instead of in the dugout. You knew Sheldon Jackson was coming in next. So the very fact that they didn't have the intent of maybe sending a Russell out to smoke three sixes and, and finish the issue showed that they were after the two points much more than the net run rate. I think they were after two things. They were after two points and they were after giving a few guys a hit in the middle. I mean, nobody needs to prove... Andre Russell doesn't need to prove how he can bat with this thing. But what they really wanted to do was get Sheldon Jackson in the middle, get Shreya Sire in the middle get Sam Billings in the middle because these are the guys who likely are going to play an important part of this tournament. They always know that Andre Russell, no matter what the situation is, will give you a certain amount of explosiveness. I think they wanted to try these guys out. They said, perhaps this is the best match where we actually have an opportunity for seeing these guys play. And I think that's exactly what they did. They just decided that they're going to go with these guys, give them the chance to sort of bat themselves into the tournament. And they're hoping that this will really help them in the last stage of this tournament. Well, there's going to be a bit of competition, perhaps, for that opening slot. We'll come back in. We know one of the two fast bowlers will likely make way for Pat Cummins. But Ajinkya Rahane certainly did his chances of a long innings in this season, Ajay. No harm at all with that now. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's put some numbers there. He's got 35 odd. But, uh, you know, if you're an you know, opening batsman on a good day, I'm, I mean, I've maintained not with Ajinke, but with anyone else. You're not going to have good days every day. You're not going to get a total that's not very daunting. So on a day like this, where you've got that start and 34 balls, you already at 44, you would expect him to come back not out or, you know, because he's a senior pro in that side. And I feel that he'd probably play the, uh, you know, the anchor sheet, anchor role that, this team requires. And if you're in sheet anchor role in a game like this, you'd want to finish it. But on the other hand, it's still better than what he had last year. He got one game at the end of the season. Or in, you know, when he was at Delhi, he got probably two or three games. That too also had towards the end of the season. So this is a good start for him. And like Joyda said about the team as well, everybody's got in, got something to look from. So if you look at positively, yes. I mean, at least he got the ball you know, away. He got a 1-6 that was over square leg. That was nice to watch. Uh, but, uh, you know, Ajinkya Rana doesn't fit into uh, Brendan McCallum's style of play. So, I'm, I'm looking forward to how KKR plays this year. Because the second half last year was fabulous to watch. I feel a little confused this year, KKR. They won this game. 
but i'm only seeing it from the outside joy you know baz better than jinx in that sense so respond to what uh, ajay surmises about uh, the two of them and the marriage between a makhalam and a rahani i think look they took rahani if you see rahani was definitely an afterthought they took him in a situation where they had no other batsman they needed an india batsman and rahani is actually perfect for these kind of totals a 130 140 150 total is a perfect rahani game and that's exactly what he's going to do really well for you get you at 150 120 125 he is very good when they don't need to either set big targets and they're chasing moderate targets now the situation is if you're in a situation where you're going to batting first and you're going to set big targets you're saying that anything below 180 normally in a stadium like the wankhede day is not a winning total then rahane perhaps is not the guy who fits in and that's a problem when he gets a 44 okay when he gets a higher score then it's very difficult to turn around and tell him look guy you got it that's excellent but you know you really don't fit into our plans so what ajay is talking about the team getting a little trifle confused and the decision making getting a bit little muddled that is very very possible after innings like that if rahane had got out for 5 or 15 balls well it was much easier to decide in the next match now it's not going to be well let's round that off and i'll put ajay on the spot to finish off this discussion next game 190 being chased Ajinkya Rahane is still very much in your scheme of things. Aaron Finch may be available. Sunil Narayan could be an option down the order. How do you go for it? I'll be a tough one. I mean, but I think if it's very next game and Aaron Finch comes in, um, it's a swap. I mean, from from my point of view, it's a hard one for Ajinkya Rahane. And um, uh, but I mean, if I was making that call, it's a simple swap. You've only played three overseas players, so you've got one slot left. So, and i presume the way they've gone into this game with only three of them they were holding that spot either for him or pat cummins when he comes in i don't know how they plan to play but if if aaron finch is in their scheme of things to start the innings then uh, you know you may have got a 45 or 44 or even one a game uh, it's not about individuals it's about a team and uh, that those are the hard calls captain and coaches have to make no i just i just get a sneaky feeling that it'll be sam billings who'll have to make way joy because Cummins definitely makes way or comes in for either a Mavi or a Numesh Yadav, more Mavi than Yadav after today's performance. So then, likely that Aaron Finch comes in, Billings goes out. How? What do you do to the batting order? Look, you bring in Sheldon Jackson earlier, and uh, well, you have you you've got guys like Rinku Singh who you're supposed to have backed for a long, long time, and you think you know they're going to do something for you. You bring in a middle order batsman. I mean, the truth of it is, or you just keep Rahane as a floater and say that look, I'm going to, if I'm 20 for three, I'll bring in Rahane. Or if I'm chasing 140, I'll play Rahane up. The truth of it is that it's a difficult one to do. Rahane is a difficult guy to play consistently in a tournament with the kind of pitches where two of the pitches of the Brabon Stadium and the Wankhede Stadium. Rahane perhaps is not the kind of batsman who fits in best. I hope, really hope, he proves us all wrong, terribly wrong, because I really like the guy. I think he's a tremendous cricketer and is a really talented uh, batsman. But that's the point. This is perhaps not his best format. Well, that's something oh. for the Kolkata management to discuss. But uh, for us now, we'll have to actually see the unique irony of the fact that uh, while Kolkata have the two points. the two best individual performances one we've already talked about ms dhoni and the other has come from another veteran also on the wrong side of 35 or 36 whatever it is that dj bravo is ajay outstanding performance from bravo with the ball he was the only one who delayed the inevitable yes he just delayed the inevitable he didn't change the course of the game uh, but he did his job what was nice and uh, interesting for me to see is Uh, with the new captain you saw a different use of dwayne bravo as well yeah. with mahendra singh dhoni we've seen it almost starts at over number 12 and then generally it's four together or maybe one odd here in spite of picking up that wicket very early in the innings or what was it over number 7 i think he carried on and he almost bowled three over two overs back to back there and that's a different kind of bowling he looks much fitter than last year i i mean i see a spring in his step not just because he's picked up wickets but he looked different otherwise last couple of years it was only those slower ones right at the death using more the experience that he has rather than the skill today you saw the skill of seam up bowling as well which might be required for all the other teams because if you're going to play at wankhede with this kind of surface the seamers will not be looking for slow ones it will be probably something 
with a little extra bounce, with a little extra seam. And Bravo is a champion. I mean, there's no doubt. It, I love watching him. He's great to watch. He's great energy. The team was defending 131. They had no chance of winning that he picked up a wicket. But when somebody goes dancing like that in front of you, it, you know, it probably gives you a look and say, listen, what's happening? Are they in the game? So you need people like this to bring you back. And uh, that's what they, uh, Bravo has always been. Good thing it's always a different dance move. He knows, he's he's aware of the entertainment factor. So he's not going to repeat dance moves. So that's the new one for the year. And we're likely to see a lot more of that joy. So often Chennai referred to as, as the team with the oldest players. Well, whether or not that continues the trend for the whole team, it's the two guys who were still around when, who was president in 2004-05? <laughs> who, that's when they started playing, Dhoni and Bravo. Absolutely. I mean, amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. The two of them have been superb. And see, the thing about it is, if you see the way Dhoni also played today, Dhoni took his chances again. Sunil Narayan, he never goes well against. And he decided that I'm not going to take chances because he felt that there was not too much there. He needed to stay till the fag end in the innings and then take his chances. So he played a very calculated innings. And my only thing is that, you know, I thought these two guys did fantastically. The person who disappointed me a bit and early days as yet is Ravindra Jadeja. I felt even as a captain somewhere, the authority was missing. Maybe it's 131 is not a great total. I also felt that if you have to bring a left arm spinner on, perhaps he's a better spinner than Santa. I would have bought, perhaps he could have bought himself on before Santa came on. Lots of stuff to think about. More than any of that, you know, all those are decisions where you can, you know, they're both two sides to every decision. More than that, what I missed a little bit was, and again, I hope I'm wrong, was the body language. The swagger of Jadeja normally in the field, I somehow didn't see that today. And look, it could be early days, first match, everyone is like that. I'm sure Dhoni's first match as captain could have been easy. It may be all that, but if they need Jadeja to swagger like Jadeja, they need Jadeja to look like Ajay is looking right now, bright and replaced in the screens, you know. Absolutely. I uh, love that. Uh, only thing is, he won't be wearing a red. He won't be wearing red, will uh, will Ravindra Jadeja. But Joy makes a good point. If you had to give a report card, uh, yes, you may have lost, lost the game. But early impressions of Jadeja, the captain, because we often talk about a bowling captain versus a batting captain. And really, you're only captaining when you're on the field. Doesn't matter when you come out to bat, you're just a batsman. So when you're on the field, that's when the real captaincy test comes out. And maybe there was a case where would he have been given the ball earlier had Dhoni been captain, for example? Mm, could be. Uh, you know, I totally agree with Joyda when he talks about you know Ravindra and his swag swagger with his batting. Uh, we could definitely see. I mean, he the form that he's been in, the way he's batted, it wasn't there. I mean, not that you know it was trying and it wasn't coming off. It's just that his mindset was not there of the Jadeja that we've got used to watching. Uh, now that, you know, he's become responsible, he was, you know, playing responsibly. So, you know, it may be a growth in life. I don't know. Really. But on the bowling front, I think what I saw, I, uh, I mean, I can't remember many games at Wankade that Ravindra has played and has bowled his full quota. You know, invariably, he's not even used as a bowler. There, were, there may be, I think, 20-30% of games Chennai Super King has played at Wankade and Ravindra has never bowled an over. So, on that front, I, I'm proud of him that, you know, he came out and bowled his four overs because I, and I'm i also one of those who's, uh, you know, always been critical about his bowling, that his bowling needs the surface. The surface makes a huge difference to his kind of bowling. So, whereas there I saw, you know, a, a little confidence in him or maybe responsibility, like Joyda said, that he at least came and, you know, finished what he is supposed to do. Uh, but early, early start... But, you know, it wasn't uh, Ravindra that I know. I'm with Joyda. I mean, you know, the guy is, you know, given pleasure to people. Even when he doesn't, when he gets that 50, whether it's the celebration, whether it's the way he attacks in the game. And at times, he looks silly as well. Just because you are a captain, uh, I hope he doesn't think that if once you become a captain, you can't do silly things and you can't make mistakes. Because then uh, you are, you know, losing the point of captaincy. Because captaincy is about making decisions. Going out there and trying what you think is right. And if you don't try and do that, you've already lost the battle. Yeah. Well, and also, of course, uh, when you talk about the panther on the field, there's a certain swag he has when he's at backward point and he comes in and tries to impact a run out, doesn't get it. 
but he's standing in front of the batsmen, talking to them. Maybe a little bit of that was uh, self-consciousness, if we could call it that. How about the other side, Joy? Um, again, I agree it's early days. One captain's on the winning side. Maybe easy to judge him as, as well done, Shreyas. So, report card for Shreyas Ayer. Look, didn't have much to do because uh, no, he that's that's unfair to say he had a lot to do because even if you take early wickets, there's much to do. But uh, his bowlers gave him great opportunities. Uh, Umesh gave him wickets up front. After Umesh, we gave him wickets up front. His two spinners strangled the middle order. So you know he always set up the game. Okay, he gave away probably more runs in the last three overs than he would have wanted to. But look, that's going to happen. You're going to go in a 20-over match. There's one or two overs where you're going to go. You know, somebody's going to bowl and no ball. Somebody's going to go for a few runs. So, all in all, I thought it was a controlled display as captain. But his bowlers just gave him so much that he wasn't really under pressure in the field. So, again, difficult to judge. Early days yet. And remember, for whatever, like, you know, that innings, the last innings of his, you know, finishing off, whether it was scored at a immaterial. His team, nine balls to spare, his team wins. He's unbeaten. So, he's done his job. So, you, you've got to give those sticks away. Do, what did he do well in the field? His bowlers did very well. Maybe he didn't need to do very much. But look, he did what was necessary. 131, if you're the fielding captain, you should be proud of under any circumstances. Well, so we've got a, we've got a thought on both the captains. Um, as far as the result of the match is concerned, maybe not enough to judge them. But certainly, we want, from Chennai's point of view, the Jadeja swag to be back. From Shreyas's point of view and from KKR's point of view, as and when they get to a losing situation, that will be his big test. For now, just a quick reminder of what happened with the bowlers in yellow. We already showed you what DJ Bravo did. He was the pick of the bowlers, probably on both sides. Three for 20 in his four overs. But look at everybody else. Five and over for Bravo. Everyone else going six plus, seven plus, 11 also for that one solo over from Shivam Dubey. And remember, they were only chasing just about in excess of uh, run a ball. So that yeah, was a bit of a thing. disappointment. Yeah, yeah, Gautam, just one thing. That, that's the one worry that you really have to look at. Shivam has given them nothing. That all-rounder that they thought would slot in there, he's given them nothing with the bat. He's really looked underconfident with the ball as well. And that's something that they'd be really worried about. Yep. So, food for thought for Chennai when they go ahead to their next game with 10 teams, of course. The games are not going to necessarily come as thick and fast as they normally do. Just to summarise, game number one of the 2022 season. It's, of course, Kolkata who emerge as winners. Maybe not as convincingly as they could have at that 132 chase. But nonetheless, nine balls to spare, two points in the bag. They win by six wickets. Top score for Rahane. And top bowling performance for Umesh Yadav picking up those two early wickets to set the cat among the pigeons. Game number one wrapped up. We've got a double header coming up on Sunday. The first of them, and of course, inevitably, we're going to be talking about captaincy roles, but not in this particular game. This is going to be Delhi taking on Mumbai at the CCI at the Brabourne Stadium. That's the afternoon game on the Sunday and uh, the game in the evening, what we will also talk about. And that, of course, is going to be Rajasthan taking on the Royal Challengers Bangalore. But let's first talk about Delhi versus Mumbai. The Battle of the Metros. It's in Mumbai, yes. But the Brabourne Stadium is supposed to be a neutral venue as far as we are concerned. And uh, Ajay, Rohit Sharma has been shouting himself hoarse, saying that, listen, for all those who think we're playing at home, we're not. It's... It's not even our familiar Wankhede Stadium. So, we're also away. You're also away. Let's put that to bed. Yeah, but they're still playing at home. The crowd is home. You know, it's still people from Mumbai who come and support you at Wankhede. The wicket is different, yes. Uh, but what I saw at Wankhede, uh, you know, in the first game is quite similar to what you probably will get at uh, uh, CCI as well. You know, Brubon Stadium as it's called. So, still home, home ground. I don't think he can, you know, take that away and say, look, we are not playing at home. You got your same hotel that you live in. You are the only ones who are in that same city that you always played. So, if he's trying to take the pressure off, I want to put the pressure back onto him. He is playing at home ground. Well, if you look at it from that way, he'll turn around and say, look, there was Shreya Sayar. He's also at home. There was Adinkya Rahani. He's also at home. And plenty of other Mumbai boys were not playing for their franchise. But for now, we have the onerous task 
of being one step ahead of Rohit Sharma and the entire think tank joy to try and extract a possible 11 for both the teams. And let's start with Mumbai and uh, see if we can get roughly close to what should be an 11. Remember, one major name missing is going to be Surya Kumar Yadav. Yeah. Still got the injury. So, uh, who are the key names you're going for, Dejoy? I think definitely Rohit and Ishan to start with. Expect Tilak Verma to bat somewhere there in the top order. Uh, definitely Tilak Verma is going to be there. After that, you're going to see possibly, definitely the 5, 6, 7 have been decided. Kieran Pollard, Daniel, Tim David at 6, definitely. Kieran Pollard, 7. Uh, Daniel Sam, 6, 7, 8. That's going to be there. The interesting thing is who's going to come in after Tilak Verma. So Rohit, Ishan, is it going to be Anmol Prit Singh? Who's going to take that place is going to be the interesting choice because that's the place in the top order that's, you know, relatively missing out there. Who are the other batsmen who's going to fill in? Because they need one more Indian batsman unless they decide to bat somebody like a Tim Davids at number five and then go for an order which is going to be much deeper in all-rounders. So, you know, that's the interesting one. I'd be interested in what Ajay has to say about that one. Yeah, I, I think uh, Tim David coming up is probably a better option than rather than just filling in somebody and saying, you know, let's keep these guys at the back. Because, you know, yes, we saw a game which was 131, but generally it's a high scoring game here. Yeah, you want your guys to get in. Uh, but the one concern that I actually would have as a Mumbai Indians fan or even the last year was their bowling. Batting is not such a big concern in that sense, because when you have a Pollard coming so late, it's almost like, you know, Dhoni, when Dhoni comes in, you will know, okay, you can't, you won't make a mistake. You might not get something that you're trying to achieve, but you won't let it go. So batting, you know, and with Rohit Sharma not having the form that uh, we all expect him to have, it's just not been there for Mumbai Indians. It's the bowling. I think it's the bowling that will really make a difference because last year, if they lost out, uh, yes, it looks on the scorecard, they didn't score enough runs or they didn't chase down. But what happens is the total that you're always chasing or what you're defending uh, becomes a you know, totally different when you have pure bowlers and then Jaspreet Bumrah's powers just go extended. When Jaspreet Bumrah has to be attacked by the opposition, that is when Mumbai can win. It's like Sunil Narayan and Chakravarti. If they don't have to be attacked and just to be played, we saw in that first game, what happened is they can't run through you. So the rest have that pressure. So I have a, my worry with Mumbai is only with their bowling. Well, if that's your worry, Ajay, then Jaspreet Bumrah plus whom? Who are your bowlers of choice who you think can rectify that problem? Yeah, if you put that list down, it, 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 there's do a that, choice. Sure. Yeah, because it's you know, tough to remember these names. I, I, I think, I mean, Jofra Archer is definitely not that. Ty Mills is a man that, you know, you would want uh, in case because, you know, Mumbai has this thought process of left and right bowlers. I would actually go with Riley Medrith as well. I would take both of them in, take Jaspeed Bumrah because you don't have anything with spin. What, what... At the start of the tournament, you will have little help for the seamers. So, if you take three pure bowlers who can actually bowl at different times, and Riley Madrid, I know it's pace and it can go either way, but you know it could have been the same with Umesh Yadav as well. So, you've got to believe or play players who you think if they have a good day, they're going to see you three. So, I, for me, those three would be a certainty to play with. And with batting, you can always adjust. You have enough Indian batsmen. Joyda spoke about uh, Tilak. Uh, and I think he's a man to watch out for. He's a man that all of India is waiting or everybody believes that he has talent. There's enough talent in Indian younger boys when it comes to batting. And especially when you're around Rohit Sharma and Ishan Kishan around and you've seen what's happened with batting. But bowling is what they struggled last year. So I, for me, those three bowlers have to play. Fair enough. You've got uh, firepower there. You've got uh, enough uh, foreigner slots to fill in there because if you've only taken Tim David and Karan Pollard in there, you can get those in. But I'm sure the Pandya family will be missed. They'll be looking down that order. It'll be unfamiliar for Mumbai fans to see both missing. Both have gone to different franchises. And uh, that's a little gap, a little hole that they'll have to fill. Maybe a Mayank Markande uh, thrown in there, either him um, or Murugan Ashwin if they need a spinner. But Joy, let's move to Delhi now. They're the opposition. Um, again, there are some players who cannot be considered for the moment. David Warner being one of them, Mitchell Marsh being another one of them, and Anrich Noh here. So those are three key players who will probably walk into almost every game. Not there now. 
Yep, I also see. I I see Delhi going with if necessary, very likely to go with three foreigners instead of four. I see Prithvi playing definitely. Prithvi, Sarfraz, and Yash Dhal, all of them playing with, along with Rishabh Pant because they'll need that extra Indian batsman up there up front. I see Lalit Yadav playing as well. He did well for them in the limited chances he got last time. And uh, after that, if you look at that bowling attack, that's a problem. That Nokia did so much for them as a bowler. Not to have him regularly there, that's going to be something. Uh, expect Tim Seifert to play for them as a specialist batsman because obviously you want to keep with uh, Rishabh Pant. But Seifert is somebody who they look in the top order to go there and take a few chances. This is still not a very, you know, even though they're missing three key players, this is a pretty, pretty formidable Delhi side still. And Prithvi Shaw is capable up front. You know, Prithvi is capable of doing a lot of damage up front. These are all pitches which he's very used to. He's played enough at the CCI himself. So, yeah, I expect uh, him to do a bit of damage up there. Yeah, once again, Ajay, I think to echo what you said about Mumbai, with Nokia missing, they will obviously have to rely on and hope that uh, their bowlers can deliver for them because even without David Warner, there's still enough solidity in that uh, in that batting lineup. You're absolutely right, and uh, you know they had enough uh, firepower in their batting last year, but it was their bowling. And Joyda was absolutely right, you know, because Nokia played a huge role. Rabada, and you know, don't forget, I mean, Akshar is still there, I know, but you know, Ashwin was also around, so he was playing a certain kind of role. Uh, so I feel their bowling, you know, their batting is. You know, so powerful that they could chase down any total. But, you know, if they have to have a good day, Chennai team was also a very solid team. But, you know, if you lose four wickets, then even Ravindra and Mahindra Singh Dhoni, who are you know, probably the greatest strikers, also have to, you know, play in a different way. So, batting is not their worry. Uh, bowling again, they'll, they'll have to start a new combination. So, how do they bring that combination? Because Shardul Thakur comes in. So, you know, you know he's an international player. Uh, plays for India, plays a very crucial role. There, what happens is he's actually the fifth bowler, you know, when he plays for India. So, the role that he plays there is different from here. Here, he has to play a role of probably a second or a third or a fourth bowler. So, you need to find who's going to be your number one bowler. And when you look down that list, you know, if we can get that list uh, down, because there's so much of talent. I think Ricky Ponting and uh, the captain have, you know, what decision to make. The kind of wicket that we've seen, and I presume that it'll be similar like that. I would go with Nokia, Lungi, Ingidi. I will keep them in that side. Mustafir, I'd wait till the wickets you know, get a little slower. Things come because if you play Nokia and Ingidi and Shardul Thakur, then they become a formidable three. You know, three seamers. Then Akshar Patel can play his role that he plays, you know, defensive role. Because if you have Lalit Yadav and Akshar Patel, two defensive spinners then two defensive fast bowlers, then throughout the game, you're only defending. So, I think, you know, that's the call. And and all teams, I think how they make a call of how they want to play will actually tell us what to do. Because first game is a little too early to pick an 11 for Delhi for me. But for me, those three fast bowlers in the side before I pick any batsman. Because batsman, I have plenty in Delhi side. I can go either way. I can, you know, shift players. But with bowling, I would want three of these guys in my first 11. Yeah, so I think, Joy, just to sum up on Delhi, um, with Nokia not being able to play, Ngidi and Fizz uh, have both just about flown in from, from South Africa after that historic win for, for Bangladesh over South Africa. So Ngidi will have a point to prove. But for the likes of Chetan Sakarya and maybe a Kamlesh Nagarkoti, this could be a big role to show that how they fit into a different franchise. True. Uh, also, Ricky Rikes is left-arm fast bowler, so Khalil Ahmed just might get a chance in. Khalil is a very clever bowler, played for India, just lost his way a little bit, of course, because the IPL is an unforgiving tournament. But again, it is the bowling. The other is that, remember, the CCI boundaries are a bit larger than Mankete. So, expect you might just get a little bit more out of somebody like a Kuldeep Yadav. And Kuldeep Yadav is a very much of a confidence player. If he gets wickets, he plays his first couple of matches, it's a big surface, you know, they're not being able to loft him, there's a bit of protection in the boundary. He's, if he gets that start in the tournament, it's very important for Delhi that Kuldeep Yadav gets going. And then if Kuldeep Yadav gets going, he and Aksar Patel together, then when, at which point Nokia comes back, this Delhi side starts cooking. Yep. All right. As as we did in uh, in the previous game as well. No need to justify or give a reason 
one name from either side to watch out for Ajay Jareja. Bombay, Delhi. No, Delhi, Rishabh Pant. Yeah, Rishabh Pant's the man who's leading them. Uh, so, I think uh, Rishabh Pant's the man to watch out for. Okay. Joy, which which side are you going to pick and who are you going to pick? <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to go this time with... Since last time, Rithraj got out, I, I picked him and he got out in exactly four balls. I'm going to go with Prithvi Shaw and I hope that I haven't made him, just jinxed him as well. Well, both Indian players, both key Indian players, both attacking Indian players, Rishabh Pant, Prithvi Shaw. Game number one, we move on to the night game. Game number two, a third venue, we will see the D.Y. Patil Stadium. Of course, three venues in Mumbai, one up in the Western Ghats in Pune. But uh, let's talk about what's happening at the D.Y. Patil Stadium on Sunday night. That is going to be Rajasthan taking on the Royal Challengers, Bengaluru. Now, two familiar captains it might be from, uh, from Delhi and Mumbai in the afternoon game. But Joy... Once again, the narrative of two new captains <laughs> up against each other. Francois Duplessis, everyone seems to think it's an ideal choice for him to be leading Virat Kohli. And uh, firstly, let's talk about the Royal Challengers Bangalore. Well, look, I, th I think, again, it's a very interesting side to have players like Virat Kohli out there. But he's not leading the side. There's no AB, there's no Gale. Finally, that big three has been completely dead. The only remnant there is Virat Kohli. It's an interesting side, but Duplessis just might be, Virat Kohli, without pressure, might just be the kind of player he might just start enjoying himself. I'm really happy to see Dinesh Karthik out there. I think he could perform. Glenn Maxwell, again, he did really well after a long time. Uh, and the player I'm really excited about, though this may not be his pitch all the time, is Hasaranga. They paid a lot of money for him, but I'm just hoping that he comes to the party because if he does... He's an exciting bowler to watch. You know, every year you look for one or two new talents to the IPL. Somebody who comes and, you know, lights it up, you know. And Hasaranga is one of the guys I'm really looking forward to watching. Yeah, I was hope I was hoping you'd you'd say that. Uh, Ajay, the other day somebody sent me a message when we were putting out our list of uh, talent for uh, 2022 season on Great Buzz Live. And they kept saying, don't you guys like Dinesh Karthik anymore? Why have you sacked him? And I had to remind him, uh, excuse me, <laughs> he's playing for a certain team called Royal Challengers Bangalore. Oh, sorry, we forgot. So, it's just so he's become so much a part of us. He keeps reminding us that, hello, guys, I love being here, but I'm actually still a player. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's the first place you want to be. It's only when you can't be there, we come and sit here. So, you know, yes, I mean, and he's as exciting as he was 10, 12 years ago. I think he's matured. I mean, when you talk to him, uh, and what happens is, and I, this is my personal uh, opinion, that once you start doing broadcasting, I think you'll start looking at the game differently as well. As a player, you know, there's a blockage in your mind or when somebody's trying to look for another angle, you say, no, this is what works for me. Once you get to the com box or you get to, uh, you know, somewhere where there's discussion happening about cricket with people who've already done, gone and over with, it somehow opens up your mind and makes you a little more solid. So, I, I, and I said this to DK as well. I said, I think this will probably be your best season in IPL that you've ever had. Uh, he's had quite a few good seasons, but I expect him to have an exceptional season because its environment is perfect for him. You know, think of him. I mean, Dinesh Karthik is not the usual guy in Indian cricket system where everything's, you know, correct and he won't go. He likes to, you know, he, he's a bundle of energy. He's always, you know, they used to actually, we used to make fun at one time, you know, he's like a, cat on a hot tin roof, you know, he's always moving about. But see where he is gone. He's got Virat Kohli on one side fielding. He's got Maxwell on the other side. The atmosphere is Royal Challengers. I mean, there's no Mr. Malia, but, you know, it's still the same, you know, you know, the bubbliness and the energy there is so much. So I think he will fit in perfectly. And I wish him he has a great season and we'll miss him. We'll certainly miss him here because he had a point of view that was new. Yeah, trust me, it was tough for DK to stay still when he was in this little window and he <laughs> couldn't move out of the window from time to time and go in and out and come in there. But uh, yeah, he'll be doing a lot of diving. But we've still got to sort out the, the batting lineup. We've got DK in there. We've got VK in there. We, of course, have Glenn Maxwell in there. We've got uh, Faf Duplessis who will be leading the side. So the top of the order, the top half really sorts itself out. We'll slot in Hasaranga somewhere in the middle. But once again... Uh, what do you do with the bottom half, Joy? Who are the players of choice for you? Harshal Patel, of course, would be a... Yeah, definitely. Player. Look, the way I'm looking at it, 
I think you need Shahbaz Ahmed to be there because he gives them, you know, definitely gives them three, four overs under any conditions. So Shahbaz and then the bowlers, Shiraz and Harshal Patel pick themselves. And just let's have a look at the international bowlers they have. I think they have a few options out there as well. Hasaranga, Shiraz, uh, and I think Hazelwood, of course. So Hazelwood, Hasaranga, Siraj, Harshal Patel, and then you're talking about Shahbaz Ahmed, then a couple of overs from somewhere, Long Road could bowl a bit. This is a pretty decent bowling attack. And remember, normally, RCB is not a team renowned for their bowling. This is a very, very decent bowling attack. You know, Siraj Patel, Hazelwood, uh, uh, Shahbaz Ahmed and Hasranga is a very decent bowling attack. That's a big change, uh, Ajay, from uh, the Royal Challengers sides from previous years because they've always, particularly with their death bowling, they had issues. Even though you had the explosive batsman putting runs on the board, they wouldn't always necessarily be as confident of defending it. Yeah, I think they had some bowlers and the conditions are probably the most difficult for any bowler when you play in Bangalore, which is not much different in Mumbai either. But uh, there's a lot of experience. I, I missed, sorry, I missed the experience in that bowling attack. You know, except for Arshal Patel, who's outstanding. What he did last year is unbelievable. I hope he has another year like that, but it's very difficult to happen. You know, you have Bravo, somebody who's, you know, used a similar style of bowling. But as you play, the opposition try and figure you out. You know, Siraj is a guy who has to take wickets right at the top. Hasaranga, all of everybody feels that Hasaranga is probably the man who will, you know, hold that fulcrum and hold that team together. Uh, but when you don't have other bowlers to help you out, I, I'm, I'm being very, uh, today probably is a day where I've been insistent on this thing. You can see that change. Every bowling attack, if it's only left on one guy, then you always end up struggling because, you know, the opposition are smart enough. Modern day cricket is not old day cricket. This is intelligent cricket that is happening in these days. So they look, they plan out how they are going to play a certain kind of bowler. So if a captain has more choices in his bowling rather than his batting, I think that works better. And to this time, as Joyda rightly said, that they have the opportunity. They have all these kinds of bowlers, but it all depends how they want to play. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to each of these teams because they are all new teams and how they think will make a difference. Because if you go in with bowlers who say, Ke, achha, do over, do over, ye karega, do over, karega, they never win. I've always believed you know, the teams that have won are teams that have five pure bowlers who are there. When they come on, the opposition team or the batsman is thinking, what should I do? So looking at that list, Siraj comes number one for me. There's no doubt. If you play Siraj... When Arshal Patel is a number one bowler, but I can't bring him on till the one number, you know, whatever, 7, 10, 12, 14, 16. So who supports me? That is the key. So if if we go back, the, uh, I think Joyda gave an option. Yeah, Joyda, what was for me, Hazelwood. Josh Hazelwood. So, so is he available to start with? Because I messed up with Nokia. Yeah, Hazelwood is available. He's available. So, so Hazelwood and you know Siraj start. Then what do you do? Are you going to Harshal Patel? No. According to me, no captain will go at that stage. They'll hold on for a long time. So who's your third bowler? Are you going to bring Hasaranga in at that time? Then Hasaranga is the man to bring that guy in the team. But if you're not, and if you want to keep that pressure going, then you'll need one more out. You know, because Siddharth Paul has done well. Karan Sharma is exceptionally good. You know, they're all very good. But how do you want to play decide that third bowler? It's not in the list of times, but third bowler who comes and still is attacking is not Hasaranga for me. So I, I, I will, you know, wait and see how uh, Faf Duplessis thinks uh, because, you know, Hasan uh, uh, has shown us his style of play. But is it going to be any different from Hasaranga or not? Because uh, last year what we saw was they weren't keen on their bowling attack. They were very happy with their batting. They won with their batting. And that's how Hasan plays his game. Fair enough. That's what uh, we have as far as the options are concerned. Berendorf also could be a possibility because they don't have, uh, they'll still have another slot to fill up there. One captain is brand new in Francois Duplessis. In the other side, also, we're going to have Mayank Agarwal leading the way for a side who many felt did a very good job at the auction. Uh, may not always translate into results for them, but Joy, I think a lot of people felt that they had some decent picks. Now it's about making those picks getting the right 11, translating it to victories. I fully agree. Look, they've had decent picks the last few years. 
but i think even compared to the last few years this is after for me after 2014 their best chance to reach the top 4 they've got a they've got a stunning opening batting lineup if you look at it you know by when they get together you know agarwal dhawan besto Uh, you know, but there's just, no best to yet. No yeah, best no best to yet. Liam Livingston. I mean, when they come, Shahrukh Khan. So even if best was not there, you know, at this point in time, Agarwal, Dhawan, Liam Livingston, Shahrukh Khan. That's a pretty decent top four out there. You have. You've got some big hitters out there. Benny Howell is a very interesting, again, all-rounder. Bowls very the strangest bowler I've seen in a long time. You know, I was just telling Harsha that I went down a rabbit hole when I started looking at the different kind of balls he tries to bowl. and they've got rabada they've got a very very decent bowling side out there let's have a look at their bowling again because that's something that's always been a trouble uh, area for them but i think this year they've got the bowling they've yep, got rabada arshdeep is there for them ishan porel they might just play him sandeep sharma is used to it rahul chahar rahul chahar is so used to playing in mumbai like conditions this is a decent bowling attack and they've got harpreet bhar who's come and performed from from time to time so he can perform with both bat and ball so yeah certainly with rabada ajay leading the way and the experience of ashdeep i mean when he emerged as one of the young indian bowlers to watch out for uh, it was certainly something that uh, people stood up and took notice and he, he is a wicket taker yeah he's a wicket taker he's a man with confidence he's you know somebody who has a calm head uh, i remember that over with sanju samson when you know last ball he didn't take that single so if ashdeep rabada rahul chair and brar if these four are in the side i am with joy that this team goes all the way i don't know how they'll play because i think they had a great side even last year you know the team exactly. that they had put out uh, uh, is probably the best side i mean everybody in that team was bought for 8 10 12 crores by everybody else everybody went for them so it was not a problem for what the team that they had but i think anil has made a call you know if you you know if you had to think of all 10 people who were sitting on those tables and with their brains and the computers you can't beat anil kumble and that's how good a team he's picked uh, and he's got rid of all the you know the staff that he had you know he's got very few people left around him so i see this year the turnaround year of the you know the red uh, punjab is the team that you must watch and if these four play at the start and they carry on uh, this is a team to watch out for there isn't a team that is so solid that i look at punjab and i feel that this year some yeah, this is the year for punjab if people of punjab have got rid of sidhu and got up <laughs> then there is a very good chance here also you heard it first you heard it right here oh, and I, your shade oh, sorry, your, <laughs> your shade of red ajay is much more leaning towards punjab than it is towards uh, towards bangalore which is just a slightly lighter yeah. orange type punjab for me this year punjab for you absolutely and i think yeah i mean uh, joy look it looks balanced they not don't really have problems of too many people who are not coming in except for johnny besto who's uh, will be coming after the test series in the west indies which is uh, well quite an interesting test series in progress there but for you player to watch out for from this game at the dy patel i'll be very honest with you for me uh, two players again very similar virat kohli shikhar dhawan both of them have huge points to prove virat that he's got the monkey of captaincy off his back and he can play freely and shikhar because he's just one of the greats like david warner like virat kohli he's one of the greats of the ipl and every year somebody comes and says oh shikhar dhawan is over there and then he'll come and score 500 runs again and he'll do it and every year he's intent on proving himself, people wrong i think he really has something he can give you okay that just ext- one question we all agree with what you said why is it that each team lets him go but it's it's something it's something that i've i've often thought about because you're right even sunrisers let him go at a time when he and david warner were such a devastating batting combination they let him go and uh, he was traded to delhi of course that was one period but delhi letting him go i can understand because delhi had so they had so many players to retain that they were i think looking for the next auction and saying that if there's no next auction perhaps prithvi is a longer term prospect but yeah you're right it's something that we need to think about saying that maybe have a chat with these guys and say why do they let somebody like shikhar dhawan go yeah so points to prove him in mumbai as well you know he was in mumbai at one stage and wherever he's gone he's done exceptionally well and i think now he's come home he's basically deep down a punjabi man and uh, <laughs> so things are working out 
for Punjab. I am telling you, this is the year for Punjab. Well, we we we'll, we will remember this clip and we'll pull it out when they walk into the playoffs and are all set to be on the verge of uh, maybe a final. But that's a long way away. That's going to be in the end of May. We're only at uh, the second day of uh, the tournament. So, Joy, you've gone with uh, two possible members of our now forming PTP 11. We did it for a different tournament. Now we're going to start doing it for this. Shikhar Dhawan slash Virat Kohli. Ajay, who's it going to be for you? Oh, it's a tough one. I mean, just a name. Uh, so he, he's, he's picked the man. But if, if, if Virat Kohli is playing a cricket match, I cannot look beyond him, you know, because the energy that he brings in and like all the other reasons that he said. But uh, so, you know, you can't look beyond him. But a man that I'm really looking forward to, and a lot of people don't, uh, you know, expect him to do exceptional, is Brar, the left arm spinner, and the way he bats and the approach for Punjab. I think he's the key. Uh, he'll probably be the fulcrum for that team if he does well. Punjab certainly does well. Well, so much to look forward to. Don't look past Virat Kohli. He's not going to be the captain. He's going to be playing under Francois Duplessis and the Punjab boys. We'll have a point to prove under Mayank Agarwal. We do have one more little point for all of you. And that's the answer to the question you've been waiting for. Not exactly straightforward, but we had answers coming thick and fast because of all our experiences. Joy, repeat the question. Give us the answer. Okay, here was a question that uh, in 2006 at the Centurion, Wow. What did a former Mumbai bowling coach, a former Kolkata coach and a Chennai coach do together in 2006 at the Centurion? The Mumbai bowling coach was one of our compatriots at Crick Buzz, that's Sean Pollock. The Kolkata coach was Jacques Carles. The Chennai coach, of course, was Stephen Fleming. And all of them together in 2006 played their 100th test together. So it's rare that, you know, three such greats of the game, you know, Stephen Fleming, Jacques Carles, Sean Pollock played their 100th test together. There you go. 100th test match. And of course, who was fastest finger first? Because we got a lot of right answers. And our winner is... Here we go. Let's see who's going to be our inaugural winner of 2022. <laughs> say no more. Well, if I did say any more, then he'd be promptly on Twitter. But uh, fair enough. Uh, we're not calling it your alternate Twitter handle anymore. If I shower here, he'd probably try and say that. But yeah, well done to be our inaugural winner in 2022. There's many, many more questions to come, many, many more teasers to come. For now, the only question that's been answered, apart from the Joy Factor question, is that Kolkata have two points on the board, but it's a long way to go. Well, it seems like uh, we've had a double header. We've only had one game. It's going to be a double header on Sunday. and We're going to be there right from the afternoon, from game one at the Brabant Stadium and finish off at the DY Patil. Three o'clock in the afternoon is when we come to you we look forward to your company then. For now, it is time to thank Ajay Jareja, Joy Bharacharya, yes. and all of you for joining us. We'll see you soon. This is Krikbaz Live.